My name is Natalie O'Shaughnessy. I'm 17 years old, and my topic for today is the many faces of a crisis. So have you ever had one of those moments where everything seems to just be going perfectly, and then it turns to custard? You see, the purpose of this title is because every single event comes with a different story, and every shared experience comes with a different perspective. But the best kind of stories are the ones that we least expect. I was put into a situation where I was in the uttermost discomfort, and yet it was one of my best memories that I'll cherish for life. But this isn't just my story. This is a story of the many lives that it touched. Meet my friend, Lucas Cuervo. On November 14th of 2017, I was diagnosed with a benign tumor called a colloid cyst. It was a almond-sized uh, uh, sphere situated in the middle of my brain. This is a benign tumor, which is pretty rare. It occurs on average, well, to three in a million people, and um, generally occurs to adults between 30 and 40 years old, and very rarely uh, to kids and teenagers. It is not well known why it occurs. Uh, it is uh, speculated that it originates from the fetus, from the time the fetus is created, uh, and it can be kept inside one's brain uh, for one's entire life, sometimes even without noticing it. Can you guess what may have been the center of our crisis this time? <laughs> Each year, NIDO sends their high school students beyond the classroom to experience learning in an environment outside their comfort zone. I signed up for Pumalin Sea kayaking, and in this trip, it took place in the south of Chile, and I was worried that I didn't know anyone on this trip. <laughs> my, my sister had originally taken this trip before me, and came back with amazing stories. She said that the views were incredible, she had sunlight every single day, and bonfires every single night. As for us, it wasn't quite like that. The weather was gray and wet. We had to wake up at 4 a.m. every single morning for the first few days, and kayaked six hours to get to the next um, location. Um, we set up tents in the rain, and we thought that was the tough part. On the fourth day, we finally had a beautiful sunny day. We really thought that our trip had turned for the better. Um, little did we know that the sunny weather actually brought with it unknown dangers. So while the sun dried off of our socks, one of us was slow, silently getting dehydrated. At dinner, I realized that there was someone missing, and I, was, I asked my teacher supervisor, Ms. Crosby, what's happened to Quidvo? Why is he standing over by the tent? And she told me that, she, that he, Quidvo had a migraine and that they gave him a paracetamol and that he'll be fine and he's taking a rest in his tent. So we didn't really think much of it until after dinner, we heard so many screams from Quidvo's tent. His pain was so intense that he was screaming for his mother and asking God to end it all. So during that night, his condition worsened and he was obviously in big trouble medically. Even the slightest sound of a tent zip would set him off. And talking about perspectives, here is Miss Michelle Crosby, um, our teacher supervisor. Hi. So the Parque Pumalian trip was an incredible trip. It was a beautiful trip and the kids were amazing, but there was this one crazy thing that happened, this one real crisis that we all had to face together. And from my point of view, it looked a little bit different because I was the only one who really evacuated with Lucas Cuervo. So just really briefly, um, Lucas had a terrible night and he was up screaming in pain. I'm sure Natalie will talk about that. So the next day we tried to wrap him in reflective blankets that came with the first aid kit and put him in the hot springs that were really close to our, well, springs is really a, an exaggeration, <laughs> close to our campsite. Um, and then we, we were able to call through satellite, the leader of the trip, her name was also Michelle, she was able to call through satellite phone to the owner of the company who found a fisherman to come and rescue Lucas and me, and he did. 
And so several of the kids, Daniel and Nacho, they helped Lucas onto the boat because he was really unable to walk. He was really not really conscious or really uh, aware of where he was or not really able to speak. And we put him kind of on this shelf and my job was kind of to hold him on this shelf, make sure he didn't fall and hit his head for about an hour until we got to this little town called Orno Piren where there was a hospital. And so we got there, held on to him, you know, sort of hoping all is well. And we got to the hospital and the driver of the boat became the driver of the truck and took us immediately to the hospital where we arrived. There were two beds in the hospital, exactly two beds, <laughs> it's very small. And so they took Lucas immediately into one of them and began to try to hydrate him with an IV bag. And he needed about eight of those bags. And so for me, it was interesting because I had only had my, I had my paddling gear on this red reflective gear with Lucas and stare at him and study him for like four hours, <laughs> hoping he was going to be okay. Really unsure. He again, wasn't really conscious, wasn't really, um, wasn't really clear, wasn't able to really speak. But eventually he started to come back. The owner came. Uh, his name was Richard Carrier, a Frenchman, and he was there too. We started calling. We called Lucas's parents. Mr. Cuervo came down that night. He arrived about two o'clock in the morning. And Lucas like slowly started to regain consciousness. And just one other quick thing that uh, to add on to the story is that when we left the hospital and got into Richard's car, we had to drive through ferries and all that because we were down in, in Parque Pumalín. So Lucas had had all this fluid injected in, or you know put into his veins and he had to go to the bathroom. So Richard and I parked and talked in this very charming Frenchman. We were talking. Lucas went across the street to, to pee. <laughs> and all of a sudden we look over and all we see are the tops of his sneakers because he sort of like lost consciousness again and he had fallen down and he was like sliding down the mountain towards the sea. <laughs> so after all that, after all that time in the hospital, we almost lost him again. But we ran across the street, grabbed his ankles, dragged him back up, he had a little bit of a cut on his forehead. Um, but it was kind of a little bit of a funny bizarre um, addendum to the story. That night Lucas's dad came and we kind of babysat with him and gave him medications and slowly he kind of revived. And as you probably already know, the end of the story, it turns out it was much more serious than a migraine or dehydration. I'll let Natalie tell that part. Thanks for listening. See, even a crisis can have its funny moments. But on a more serious note, I will never be able to unsee the image that, of Danny and Nacho carrying my unresponsive friend to that boat. As Cuervo was evacuated to the hospital, we were faced with completing our journey. It was amazing how the smallest of things brought us so much joy and entertainment. And although we were concerned for our friend, we all felt a sense of living in the moment. So finally, the weather was warm enough to change out of our dry suits and into our wetsuits. And John only having brought sandals didn't seem so bad anymore. We connected with the local culture, and that day, which, that day served as a very good distraction. <laughs> then we finally got to enjoy being on the water, and we had a water fight. <laughs> At the end of this day, Cuervo joined us after having been rehydrated, and we took him on the bus. We were overjoyed to see him return, because this is what was going through our minds. Cuervo defined our trip. I was terrified. I didn't know what to expect and even if he would be okay. This week without Wall Street did not feel like a normal school trip. It was more like an adventure from a Bear Grylls episode. I think it was one of the craziest trips I've ever done. Um, for me, Pumalin was one of the biggest um, bonding trips that I've been on to. Uh, a big part of it was because it was emotionally very intense since one of our friends like almost died <laughs> and we all uh we still talk today so although this trip had its challenges we were still able to see the nature at its most beautiful and we achieved so much of our kayaking monday the next day when we arrived back to santiago we all decided to uh, take a group photo with the sweaters that we had previously bought and as you can see two of those people are actually photoshopped in because they didn't get any and John needed his sandals in it so we were actually shedding so much light onto the situation we were making jokes about the fact that um, everything that happened because we wanted to be more optimistic optimistic about what went on rather than think about all the bad times Tuesday however at 9 30 a.m. Cuervo sent the Pumalin group chat a message saying that he had to go 
he was in hospital and he had to be rushed to surgery because he actually had a brain tumor. And this Saturday was Kermes and we left Kermes together to sneak in and give him cookies into the ICU and we met his family in the hospital. So that was really fun. Throughout that whole month when we were visiting Cuervo in hospital, he kept, I think about the first time when I talked to him, he told me that he was really worried about finishing his extended essay for the International Baccalaureate. I was like blown out of my mind. I was like, you just had brain surgery, Cuervo. Like, <laughs> kind of give yourself a break. But after the first time, he was perfectly fine. He was actually, his whole entire perspective on life had changed. He was realizing that you need to take step, like you need to take life with your own steps. You don't have like, not, not everything will just like come to you. Everyone takes their own steps in life. You just have to find your own pace and go with it. So what can we learn from this? Learning how to react to, an event, to a turn of events when the unexpected happens. Life will always take a turn at some point in time and you just have to act fast. The most spontaneous events can help you find the most profound part of your best self. Second, smile your way through a crisis. Not one day, there was not one day that we didn't fall, that we didn't all find something to smile at. And I managed to see these people in their truest, kindest, most generous, optimistic selves. This might sound cliche, but last and third of all, you only live once. Amazing friendships come from moments like these. Whether it's a crisis or you're taking time for yourself, enjoy yourself when you're not focusing on living life by a schedule. Take my story of Pumalina as an example. This was us post-trip. I met some of my best friends there. So now I invite you all to see it as an opportunity and a challenge instead of a disaster and to live in the moment. Thank you.